What's up, Eagles Nation? What's going on, NFL World? How you doing, Division Rivals? This is Stephen Heider with Gate City Sports Channel. The sports channel where the cerebral NFL fan comes for about 10 minutes of daily content. All right, y'all. Today's topic, we're going to talk about free agent cornerback Stephen Nelson, the perceived number one cornerback on this free agent market as it stands now. I will caution everybody, it may or may not change following June 1st. That's when teams can June 1st designate players for cut or trade. The reason that's a big deal, guys, is because if you June 1st designate a player, what ends up happening, guys, is that you only have to pay the dead money that accrues on this year's. And then all the rest of the dead money throughout the contract will then come due the following year. So when you have a league year that has been, you know, the, the overall cap has been reduced by what happened, the pandemic, stuff like that, guys, some teams probably think that it's a very good idea to maybe delay that hit until the following season to where the cap is expected to go back up. So kind of the underlying theory here of why some teams and why some guys might become available following June 1st. All right, you guys know this. Anytime I break down a player, I don't want to see your best game, okay? That's all great. I, I know guys have good games, and if you have several good games, you know, if I'm looking at more than, you know, a third of the season is just solid, you know, 80 or above gradings, like it tells me you're a good player, no doubt about it. But I always say this, guys. The truth is always found in, in the bad performances, I want to know what you were at your worst so I can see where the where the issues lie, what has to be fixed, you know, what are the limitations, what happened, basically. So, as I broke down Steven Nelson, guys, the thing I want to bring to you today is the game against Buffalo. Which I just want to tell you right from the jump, guys, it's a really, really difficult ask. Because, number one, Buffalo has guys like Gabriel Davis and Stefan Diggs that can absolutely bring it at you. I mean, these are really good contested catch guys, and they're really big physical dudes. Stefan Diggs is slept on for how good he is of a contested catch guy. He's been one of the best in the league for the past three or four years, and he goes a little unnoticed. Um, this is what I'll say. He had a 37.6 coverage grade in that Week 14 matchup against Buffalo, but the thing that really drew my attention was it wasn't just that he got graded below a 40. It caught my attention that he was targeted 15 times in this game. When you get targeted 15 times in a game, I need to know what's going on. Now, I will say, this is a very complex breakdown, okay? I don't think this is bad as it might seem right now, guys. Just stick with me. Like, there's good, there's bad on this film. But I will say, like, look, 15 targets, only 7 catches, under 50% completion rate against him in coverage. He had one pass breakup. He was credited with one touchdown, but to be honest with you, it's argumentative that he gave up a second. But some of that has to do with the coverage and responsibility and stuff like that. All right, guys, without further ado, I want to run a little bit into his film, and I want to talk a little bit about what I saw on his film against Buffalo. Let's get it. The first thing I noticed, guys, was they started dinking and dunking Steven, uh, Steven Nelson to death in the second quarter in particular, but throughout the game. I saw a lot of things like, you know, dig, dig routes, out routes, comebacks, curls, hitches, like the timing routes. They went after him on timing routes. When that happens, guys, I try to, to pay attention to the coverage that is trying to be utilized and in the way that the offensive coordinator, Brian Dable, is attacking the said coverage. And what I saw was this, guys. They went to that timing and rhythm route tree because Stefan, you know, Stefan Diggs and Gabriel were getting a little separation downfield from, you know, Steven Nelson. And I think that caused him to kind of maybe bite a little bit on double moves, maybe oversell a little bit with his hips. to where he got too scared of getting beat deep that he would overplay the deep routes, and then that just opened up those timing you know, and rhythm routes underneath of him. There's a lot of complexity to this, guys. I just want to state that right from the start, because I will say that although... He definitely got taken a few times on, on some vertical concepts. Uh, one complexity I like to bring up is there's a play in the fourth quarter that could have been the nail in the coffin, but I'm not completely sold it was, you know, that it's Steven Nelson's fault.
See, what ends up happening here, guys, is to me this looks like a cover three defense, right? And what you have here is you have Stefan Diggs, who's on the opposite side, so the offensive right side, and he's running a dig route. And then basically that dig route catches the attention of the safety. Then you see Gabriel Davis, boom, right over the top because that safety's eyes get diverted. You got Steven Nelson playing an outside technique. Now you're out of phase as a cornerback. You have no way of making a play on that ball if you're out of phase. You need to be in phase. And because of the coverage principles, he's out of phase. A lot of complexity on this film. But going back to the timing and rhythm discussion that I brought up to you guys and I was talking about, I also saw plays where, where he fought. Like, he fought his way back to the football. He was making plays on the ball. He got a pass break up in there. I mean, look, it's, it's complex, guys. Like, they definitely tried to attack him in that way. I definitely think that um, he lost his footing a lot, and I think there's something to be said about him sinking his zips and getting in and out of his breaks. Like, I, I do think that he's a very fluid mover, but I, I did see some issues in this game to where he kept losing his footing and it was resulting in some fairly easy completions and some very easy completions had, you know, even, you know, Allen saw, the, saw what was going on over there. But it's a complex issue here, guys, but nonetheless, I saw it. Now I want to get into what I think is the biggest concern I had with Steven Nelson's film. It's his tackling. And I'm not saying that he's necessarily a bad tackler. I'm not calling him like, you know, some of the things that we've experienced in Philadelphia, the, you know, Ronald Darby and some of these other guys. I think he's a way more willing tackler than a Ronald Darby is, but I'm not always sold on his commitment <laughs> to the run game, you know, to stopping, not even necessarily the run game. That's, that's a bad way of saying it. Just coming up and making a stick. I think he's too content to let another player make the play when it's really, he should have that dog in him to shut the play down where it is. And I don't always see that on his film, guys. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, that kind of concerns me because there were a couple plays to where he definitely got taken. I mean, he definitely got taken on a couple of plays. Now, what I will say is this, guys, just kind of round out and talk about this in completion. I thought that, look, yes, you could say he got beat with some double moves, things like that, no doubt about it. But he also showed pretty good recognition in, in, in understanding of the defense. There was one time where they ran a stack set at him. And you can see that the guy that's up front on that stack set, so the defender that's up front, that's, that's high up on the receiver on the stack set, he's your hook defender. Steven Nelson is more of your third defender, the thirds. So cover three kind of defender type in this. And he does a good job getting the death right. I don't know what Jared Allen was was reading there. I'm sorry, not Jared Allen. I'm not too sure what he was reading there, but he made a really bad play. I mean, it was a really, really bad play. And it was an easy INT. But look, you got to give Steven Nelson his credit for that play in particular because I thought he did a really good job there. All right, guys, this is what I think about him, man. Like, I think it's complex, guys. He's a right cornerback. He took 837 out of 839 snaps out wide as a right cornerback. I think he's a shorter guy. I think you have to have a little bit of concerns here. I know they list him at 5'11", guys, but by his measurements, he's 5'10", and it's not even close to 5'11". He's firmly 5'10". Uh, he's only got a 30-inch, 30, uh, 30 a little over 30-and-a-half-inch arm length, guys, and his wingspan is only like 72 inches. This is not a very rangy, lengthy corner, guys, to, to be honest. He, he plays like a short guy, guy you would expect, expect to probably be in the running to be a slot corner. The problem was is that solely based on 2020, guys, he only played 41 snaps in the slot. So I don't know if he gives you that versatility or not. I mean, I'm not going to say that the guy can't do it because he may have just never been asked to do it. He might be completely capable of it. But I could definitely see a situation when you take a guy like Steven Nelson, you have McPherson, you have Slay, and now you have three guys that you feel comfortable that can play inside, outside, and you can bounce around by matchups. I get it. But I will say that my concern is, is that Steven Nelson 
exclusively played mostly on the boundary side, but more particularly on the right side, whether it was the boundary or the field side. He didn't do a lot of movement, so a lot of question marks there, guys. I can't say definitively a lot of things here, but I can say that that's what it was. We'll have to see if he could be more than that, and that's that's where it leaves me. But I'll leave this as my final thought. I think Steven Nelson is the kind of guy you have to be careful throwing big money at. You cannot throw this dude number one cornerback money. I don't think that he has the receipts on his resume to warrant that type of money. I think you got to be cautious here with Steven Nelson. I like him. I definitely think that you can make a case that because of youth, the age that he still has left playing, that he's probably definitely the, the guy you should be targeting here. But you know, like I said, guys, you got to be careful, man. I, I think there are still other alternatives, and, and I wouldn't go bankrupting what we have for a guy that you're going to pay like a number one corner, but he's he's not a number one corner. And by the way, we would have to do a lot of finagling and moving to get this guy number one cornerback money to begin with. I don't think he's going to get it. But all right, guys, these are my thoughts. I want to know your thoughts. Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, link is in the description below. Don't forget to like and comment on the video, guys. It's what spikes the algorithm, gets it suggested to other people. And last but not least, I would love to add you to the community where we talk a lot about, you know, analytics. We break down film here. We do a lot of the, you know, the deep, dirty work here. So if you want to be a part of the community, you got to hit that subscribe button, guys. I appreciate y'all, and I'll see you guys on the next video.